Oh, we're back here today to begin our lessons on the Great Tribulation period. And now in chapter 6, we, first of all, we have learned the six seals that's in here. And I ha I'm not going to go over it all the way, the way that I want to, but we have to repeat to understand what's happening. So this is, we have been raptured to be with the Lord in Revelation chapter 4. You have to understand that. And then this is when the great tribulation appears after in chapter 6. And they have all of these just things that we do not use today. But in giving these out, they are all filled with all satanic powers, all demonic spirits. And this is why this great tribulation period has such awful things that happen. And I'm going to read just one or two to you because he says, and when he had opened the fourth seal, this is in chapter four, six, verse seven, I heard the voice of the, this is amazing, the fourth beast. Now see, these are beasts, they're called, but they're real people. Come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Now, this is what's going to happen. This is a blessing for you to know that these things are going to happen to all of those that worship this beast. And this is amazing. And this is the sword and with hunger. And this is amazing. The, the earth in hunger in hell, all of these things are doing things to you that should never be allowed to do, but they can't stop them in this age. And then with death and with the beast of the earth, this is what is happening at the very beginning of the great tribulation period. And that is all through here. Now we're not going to give you all of these because it's important that we understand that this is happening right now. The book says, the Bible, the Word of God is what we go by. And he says, listen at chapter 1 John 4, verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come into the flesh is not of God. And this is that, uh, uh, listen at this, that is not all of this. Is, uh, Antichrist is already here. You see, that's what he says, the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and this is a la more right now by in the world that is full of Antichrist lies, satanic powers, and we're going to learn these words again in chapter, this is amazing, in chapter 21 he says, for us, now these go together, you have to understand the things that are happening to people that do not know Christ, and he says, and he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my people. But listen to the people that are living this time that we are in. And it says in chapter 21, verse 8, And the fearful and unbelievers and the abominable and murderers. If you hate somebody, you're a murderer, according to this word. And whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars. You can't tell a lie. God knows your heart. Everything you do shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is 
the second death. You see, this is why I'm here, to give this out in the last days. And we are, they're already here. And they're not obeying the word of God. And this is breaking my heart. And then he says in 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, for the body is not one member, but many. Hereby know we, 1 John 4, 13, hereby know we that we dwell in him as believers now, and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. 2 Corinthians 1, 22, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. We're sealed. Satan can't touch the true believers. And John 4, 23, but the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship. And then we see in John 4, 24, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And he says, this is Hebrews 9, 12, by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtain, obtained eternal redemption for us. The blood is God's only purchase price of redemption for us. And then we are sealed. And that's what we're going to learn in chapter seven that I'm going to read. And listen what our ownership is. Ownership, security, and possession, and the spirit of our God seals us with that spirit. You see, this is what we need to know the word of God. And I thank God for the opportunity to be here. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We come to the throne of grace to know the word of God and to pray for those that have never received the blessings of being a son of God, an heir of God, and giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partaker of his divine inheritance as saints of light in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. And we thank thee and praise thee this moment that today we are saints of light. And we are praying for those that have never received the Lord Jesus Christ to be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto thee. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. We pray for 100-fold every day, and we're rejoicing in victory. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. So today we are going to learn, as we have already been over this a little, and you cannot just have this one time. You have to study it and study it. So in chapter 7 now, after chapter 6, and I'm going to show you that one thing that is a sad thing, but it happens to people because, and they, here's what I told you before about the death and hell. And he says in chapter 6, verse 15, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the, this is amazing, rich men and chief captains and mighty men, and every bondsman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And he says, and said to the mountains, fall on us, fall on us, right there. Instead of turning to God, this is the first six seals. And what are they doing? going to the mountains and saying they wanted the rocks and mountains to fall on them instead of turning to God and said to the mountains, fall on us and hide us from the face of him. That's, this is the saddest thing. 
on these throne from the wrath of God for the great day of his is to come is here right now. Now this is a, major, a lesson that we all have to learn about and to know how great our God is and everything he gives to us is ours. We are his inheritance after we become a child of God and for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Right here, all you have to do. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So now after this, God gives a break in chapter 7. And what he is doing, he is sealing just like I said before, this is his ceiling for everybody that has been born again. Ownership, security, and possession. And here, what happened in chapter 7, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. All we have sealed, the servants of God, the 144,000 Jewish people had to be sealed to serve the Lord during the seven-year period. Now, you, I can't give you all of this. I've gone through it one time or maybe twice. And now in verse 9, in chapter 7, verse 9, And this I beheld, and lo, a great earthquake. This is amazing. This is the great multitude which no man could number, great multitude of people of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues and before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. They are rejoicing that they are saved from the awful times that already had begun. And listen to this. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb, and all the angels and around that. This is a most amazing thing. And this is the greatest blessing, and saying, Amen, blessing, blessing, blessing. This is what every one of us should be doing. This is in glory and wisdom. And this is, this is wonderful that we can all give to him the honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. This is what we, that's what the 140,000 Jewish people are to serve the whole world trying to reach them for Christ. And then in verse, this is amazing because in verse 13, one of the elders that had been giving God the glory, he said, what are these which are arrayed in white robes and where they come from? And in verse 14, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You see, that's what we are. And listen what he says. Therefore are they, this is a most amazing thing, therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him night and day in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne said, shall dwell among them. Now listen to this. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them. And for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. And now you see what we see in heaven that he's got waiting for us. Chapter 21, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more pain. Listen to this. This is amazing. This is the 
neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. No more death. This is what we're waiting for. And I want, I'm not going to read chapter 14 today because I don't have the time to explain to thee what God gave from chapter 7 is for us that how we are to live. And I'm going to just give this one verse, but I'm going to continue to read it. This, these are they which were, this is the most amazing thing. First are they that which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. Then were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto the Lord, the Lamb of God. And is that mouth was manifested for there are fallen to serve the Lord. Everything in here is to worship the Lord and know him and serve him. This is the greatest gift. And now in chapter 8, we come to chapter 8, and they, the first blessings that they have are the blessings that our prayers are written and in heaven, our prayers, the first eight. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now this is what's happening on the great tribulation period. There is no other way to live than to obey the word of God and read it every day. For the, the beast, all of these, now listen, and the first angel, these are the angels sounded. There followed, this is amazing what happens, hail and the thunder with blood, the blood, and I listen to this, and they pass their, upon the earth, and the part of the trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up, and the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great, listen to this, mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. These are things that's going to happen just after these 144,000 are reaching the people that are there. And then it says, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships went dismayed, all gone. And the, the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were, and, and full of the third part of the rivers, and unto the fountains of water, that the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because it made the waters bitter. These are the things that's going to happen to every person that doesn't receive Christ as Savior. And then the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, and the third part of them were darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of the day, and for the night likewise. These are the things that are going to happen. And we are in heaven. We have gone to be raptured with the Lord. 
every believer is going to receive a body of light. Come up hither. You're already there in chapter 4 of the book of Revelation. And here we are in heaven, bowing down, giving him the blessings and praying to him. And he gave them crowns for their service for them on the earth. This is what we see every day in our lives. And the mount and the fountains of many mansions that he has is pure gold. And you know what the Bible says? The word of God is I, chapter 12, Psalm chapter 12. I have to read it to you for you to understand and know. The mouth of our Lord are pure words, the words of God. As silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. Every word in this book is the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. That's how we are supposed to be pure as he is pure and giving out the word of God and giving them what God has given to us. And this is the only way that anybody can get to heaven is through the word of God. And now for every person that has never received this gift, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. This is even to them that believe on his name. And every person that is here today listening to this program, here we have, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. The Spirit of God dwells within us, and he never leaves us. And we have here the greatest gift in the world. Ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This is what we are to be doing every day, reading the word of God. And if you will just turn to 1 John 5 and read that this week, you will see the blessings that we have. And then we come to chapter 9 of Revelation. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven. This is unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. That's where people are. They will never come out. If you should go to heaven today and never tell your children, if your children never tell you that they are born again, they will never see you again. This has been a burden for me. There's, God did not make hell for people, but for the devil and his angels. And here we see, and he, this is amazing what all the evil things that happens. And here, this name of all these things that are happening. And now, all of this, and in them, it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of scorpions when he maketh, smiteth a man. This is what, and in thine Thy those times shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. But we see in all of these lessons and has come out of the most powerful words that they are going to kill all the people that are there. This is the most heartbreaking lessons, and the animals all father around 
the bottomless pit and there um, a smoke out of the pit and the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the were darkened but this moment right now they did not kill them because they wanted to torment them and this is a thing that we must understand and there came out a smoke this is the most amazing story and he the earth and then the given power as the service of the earth has power you see if we don't understand what is happening we're going to be deceived by people that don't know God and then we see in this chapter of chapter 9 again and they that had as the liar of the woman and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates of, it were, breastplate of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses run into battle. And they had this like uh, scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. You see, today, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And every person that's listening today, he says, in chapter 9 of Hebrews, verse 14, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot? And he says in chapter 9, verse 12, By his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. The blood is the God's only purchase price of redemption for us. And under grace, God freely gives to the believing sinner eternal life. The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is the final name of the true God. Revelation 1, 5, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That's what Jesus did. He went to the cross and died, was beaten with a leather thong, 39 stripes. He died instead of us, and he shed his pure blood. That pure blood is in us, and without blood, it's impossible to please God. His blood and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God and the blood, are in us, protecting us from all the evil things that are in the world. And this is one of the things that we need to know because this spirit is the final name of the one true God. That God is John chapter 17. It's so amazing what a blessing this is for every person to know that Jesus Christ is the only person that could give us eternal life. And it says, show us the way unto him that giveth us eternal life. That's the only way we can get to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave us his son his son gave us his life so that we could have eternal life. There is nothing else in this world for any person. And as you read these words, 
you can understand how great God is. You see, here's we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But until we are born of the Spirit, we only have a body and a soul. Our spirit has to be in us. Thank you for hearing our prayers today, and we pray for 100-fold. Call upon him now to give you victory over all sin.